Let's say that I started out my day flipping a coin 10 times and getting, let's say, eight tails and two heads. Then on the one hand, the law of large numbers assures me that heads will soon catch up. Given enough time and patience and coin flips, the proportion of tails and heads will even out so that I've got about 50% tails and 50% heads. On the other hand, the gambler's fallacy teaches me to be wary of the idea that just because I started out the day flipping a few more tails than heads, that the heads would now be due and that the heads will soon catch up. What's the catch here? Doesn't it seem like the idea behind the gambler's fallacy is just a law of large numbers? And why do we call it a fallacy if the law of large numbers is true? My explanation would be the following. The law of large numbers concerns itself with a proportion and a gambler. As a gambler, you concern yourself with the absolute difference between the number of times you've won and lost. So let's say that we are a gambler and we bet $1 on each head. So this morning we lost $6. But now we're going to try to use the law of large numbers. And we flip the coin two million times. And let's say we get one million and one tails and 999,999 heads. Then as far as the proportion goes, as far as the percentages go, the law of large numbers is satisfied. We are at 50.00 something percent tails and 49.99 something percent heads. Whereas this morning we were at 80% tails and 20% heads, right? So for all intents and purposes, heads has caught up. But as a gambler, we look at it a bit differently. We see that to go along with the $6 in losses we had this morning, we now have two dollars more that we've lost. So these are concerning themselves with different aspects of catching up. The law of large numbers can be satisfied and be true where the gambler's fallacy or the idea behind it can be false. There's no paradox here.